Before this episode, The Harvey Hour starts, I just want to announce that I've set up a voice messaging system for this show. If you have ever wanted to be on the show, now here's your chance. If you click the first link in the description down below or go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour slash message, you can send in your questions and or opinions that me and my dad will answer and discuss right here on The Harvey Hour. Make sure you guys go click over there, send us your questions, send us your opinions, and we will discuss them on the show. But for now, let's get on with the Harvey Hour. Welcome to the Harvey Hour. My name's Nathan Harvey. I'm back with my dad, Stephen Harvey. And today I want to start off with a little bit of breaking news. There's a report coming out from Diana Russini who says that Aaron Rodgers wants to be the highest paid quarterback in the NFL by a large margin, which is estimated to be $50 million a year. $50 million a year. And now I have a bit of a theory and we're going to throw this graphic up right now. And for the audio and the podcast listeners, we're going to break this down. Over the past 10 years, 10 Super Bowl winners, so Eli Manning, Joe Flacco, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady again, Nick Foles, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, and Matt Stafford, their salary cap hits to their team have been 12.3% or below. So that means anyone, any quarterback with a cap hit for their team of 12.4% or higher doesn't win the Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers hit going to next year. He'll be a $46 million cap at next year. That's 22, he's 22% hit right now. So if when the cap rate, when the uh, when the cap space increases, we're looking at a cap at a potentially for the Packers. And if he wants 50 million a year, and they're already 59 million over the cap, how are they gonna be able to afford it? I don't know. It's a serious problem. Yeah. Who is the highest paid quarterback in the league right now? Patrick Mahomes. And how much? He's uh, he, uh, next year, I think his cap hit will be 47 million or something like that. So he's he's well over that percent the percentage oh, yeah. too, right? yeah. which you haven't said yet. Let's let's see what the percentages are for these uh, the last 10 years. So Eli Manning's 11 points or <coughs> let's go highest. So in 2020, Tom Brady was the highest in the past 10 years at a 12.3% and then in 2018, it was a 12.2 for the Patriots. And the next highest would be Peyton Manning at 11.7. And then we have Eli. Uh, and then we have yeah Eli Manning at 11.6 in 2011. And then Matt Stafford at 10.7. And quarterbacks like Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, I believe, is 17 percent of his team's cap. Mahomes is going to be a serious hit in these upcoming years, especially when that 50 million a year kicks in for his 500 million dollar contract over 10 years. That's going to seriously derail the Chiefs. You have extensions coming on, like a Josh Allen. He's going to make, I think, he's going to make like four hundred million over the over the next, I think, yeah. twelve years or something like that. You have uh, extensions from Joe Burrow, potentially uh, uh, Lamar Jackson, who still hasn't signed a contract yet. He's going to be yeah. a free agent in twenty twenty three if if he doesn't get an extension. Uh, Justin Herbert, you have something with someone like that. So you have teams that are going to be paying big sums of money, and <laughs> just over the course of the past ten years. Paying your quarterback a lot of money is not enough to win. Well, I think one thing it might say is when you pay him that much and they, they represent that much of the cap, then you can't you don't have the money to pay the other players. Exactly. So you wind up with a great quarterback but not enough supporting cast to make it. Right. Right? So football's a team sport. You know? Yeah. Okay. Well, so interesting that's interesting data and I, I guess I buy into it. Uh, you know, I I don't think that Aaron Rodgers is worth fifty million bucks a Neither year. Neither do I. Uh, you know, uh, the way Mahomes played this past year, I'm not sure he's worth the money that he's getting either. But uh, yeah, he did get to the super. He got to the uh, it's divisional the, game. He got to the divisional. He didn't get to the Super Bowl, but uh, and he kind of blew it in that game. So uh, Aaron Rodgers is a great player. I don't take that away from him, but I don't think oh, he's no. worth fifty. Wait, I don't I think, think he's I think worth I'm fifty. Wrong. 50 million a year. Who did the Bengals play in the championship game? If it's not the Chiefs, I'm, I'm thinking that right now. Who the, no, I think, I think they made it to the championship game, right? No, the Bengals wouldn't pay the Chiefs. They, Who would they the play Chiefs, in the divisional game? They Oh, the divisional game. Oh, uh, sorry, the, the, the championship the, game. I think it was champ, the Chiefs. The championship, the Super Bowl? No, 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 not the Super Bowl. Oh, the, the Bengals, the, the the Bengals played the. Uh, I think it was the Chiefs. 
Yes, it was the Chiefs. Oh, so yeah, yeah I was wrong. Yeah. yeah, so divisional. Yeah, they played the right. Chiefs. Yeah, it's divisional. They played the the Titans. Yeah, it's yeah. my bad. So I mean, I'm taking a look at this. Aaron Rodgers, the past three years, has gone 39 and th- 39 and nine, I believe. Yeah, he's had three losses the past three years. He's put up great regular season stats. Two back to back MVPs. We both agree, though. Tom Brady should have won that uh, this past year. He's not a fifty million a year quarterback, especially at thirty eight years old. You're going to be paying him fifty million for what three years? That's one hundred and fifty million. I don't think he's worth fifty million a year. He should be maybe top five, top seven highest paid quarterback in the league. But you're asking for the number one thing when you got when you aren't even winning playoff games. You lost to Jimmy Gag uh, two out of the past three years. You lost to Tom Brady. Your coach didn't believe in you in the in the championship game against Brady. You were first and goal at the eight yard line. You couldn't even convert on a, a eight yards to score a touchdown in that game. Your your playoffs is an exact night and day shift from he the made a huge season. he made a huge mistake not in this uh, last NFC championship game but the the last not this past one but the prior year he was they were down there right right and and he dropped back to pass and he. He could have run right in. Yeah, it was, it was wide it was, open. It was, it was, just yeah, that, run that, that, right that was the third and goal he threw before the field and, goal. And, 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 and yeah. incomplete. That was a that was a major boneheaded play. And that's why I think <laughs> that's why I think Matt Lafleur was like, "I've seen enough. We're just going to kick a field goal. Hopefully, the defense could stop Brady from driving." Of course, they didn't, and then the Brady ended up winning the Super Bowl that year. But when if I'm the Packers, I'm looking at Aaron Rodgers saying, "Okay, last off season." You were being this jerk who was like, oh, I don't know, you know, am I retiring? Who knows? He was being this real shady character, begging for his, begging for more weapons, complaining he doesn't have enough weapons. Now you're asking $50 million a year, and Devontae Adams will probably be gone. So if you're asking for to be the highest paid quarterback, who are you going to have? No. Yeah. It just shows maybe he, he doesn't really care that much about winning a Super Bowl. He just cares about more money. It's weird, though. In, in <coughs> probably the hardest... Or, or maybe the, he's maybe he's forcing the Packers to trade him. That 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 could be. Yeah. That very well could be. But I'm, I'm looking at this now, right? Football is probably the hardest and the most team-dependent sport out, out of the major sports. Because you could have a phenomenal offense, but a terrible defense, and not win. Aaron Rodgers is playing like he's the only guy. He's playing like the LeBron James, the 03 Cavs, and I believe the twenty six, uh, the 17 Cavs, where he just carried them to a finals. They got swept both times by the Warriors and by the Spurs in 03. But Aaron Rodgers is playing a single man game, a uh, single man's game within a team uh, based game. Yeah. The NFL is team ridden. It's built upon a great team. And Aaron Rodgers is playing like he's the only one that matters in the NFL. You, 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 okay, I understand. Yes, back-to-back MVP, MVP seasons. He should get paid. I agree with that. But you're asking for $50 million a year when he hasn't won a playoff game in, or like a Super Bowl in 11 years. He's 7-9 since <coughs> the Super Bowl win. Uh, maybe he's just forcing the trade. Maybe but then he's again, just wants to force the trade. Yeah, but then uh, it's, it's Aaron <coughs> Rodgers. You're going to need to give up so much to get him. And now he's asking for $50 million? Yeah, I don't know what he's trying to do. <laughs> now, now I'm, I'm going to ask I you guess this. He, he's, See if he can make 50 million bucks, I guess. Yeah. So let me ask you this now. So we have quarterbacks, really, really talented quarterbacks in the NFL who want to, and and, and just one more thing about Aaron Rodgers real quick. I I would understand if you're a player and you haven't made a lot of money in the NFL, you want to get paid big sums of money. Everyone likes getting paid big sums of money. Yeah. Of course. (laughs) But when you're Aaron Rodgers and you've won a Super Bowl and you've made upwards of $200 million in your total career in the NFL, why are you still like why are you still acting like you've never made much money in the NFL? There's so many big money making opportunities outside the NFL that staying in the NFL. He's made plenty of money. I mean, he does the State Farm commercials, right? That, that, I'm sure that makes him on, a lot of he's money. He's on all the time. I'm sure he made a ton of money on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. <coughs> so I'm wondering. What's his net worth? Does it, does, it, it, it's upwards of two hundred million dollars. Two hundred million. Two hundred million dollars. Aaron yeah. Rodgers. Yeah. Wow. So like, like that, that's what I'm wondering. Like. <laughs> If you're like a Lamar Jackson who's insanely talented and still in his rookie deal and hasn't gotten paid, I would understand why you want to get paid the big the big money. And that's why these top rookie quarterbacks and the top second year and third year quarterbacks, they want to get these big extensions. Mahomes is going to make $500 million. Uh, 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 Josh Allen, he has $100 million guaranteed in his extension. Like these, these quarterbacks are getting huge sums of money because they haven't made much money in the NFL yet. They've been on rookie deals and just haven't gotten paid much. 
but you're Aaron Rodgers. You've won a Super Bowl. You've been in the league for a very long time. You've made upwards of $200 million in your career. Why are you asking for $50 million a year? I, I don't understand this. And, that, and, and he's like, oh, but I want, I, want pa- I want Devontae Adams to come with me. Maybe even Randall Cobb, too. Well, the Packers aren't going to give it to you when they're over $50 million over the cap. And they still need to pay you. And you're asking for $50 million a year. I don't understand his motive here. I think it's stupid. You aren't going to win. The, the, the data shows the past 10 years, paying a quarterback big sums of money is not how you win a Super Bowl anymore. You build it by taking small amounts of money and building a team around you. That's exactly what Brady did over the 22 years. He took less money yeah. and built weapons around him. Although yeah. the weapons were Chris Hogan, Julian Edelman, who eventually became a really good receiver. He made Danny everyone Amendola. around him better. He made everyone around and it, him yes, better. Yes. Throughout, throughout his entire Patriot career, he made the receivers around him much better. He, never, he, had, one, he had one Hall of Fame <coughs> receiver. That's Randy, Randy Moss. Moss. Yeah. <coughs> After well, that, well, Gronk. Julian Edelman's probably going to be a Hall uh, of Famer, and he, I think he, he uh, doesn't have the, he doesn't have the uh, the he has the accomplishments, but he doesn't have the statistics to back him up. Uh, I think he makes it. I did. I, know, I don't. I, I don't, don't know about Wes Welker. He probably won't. I don't know if he'll make. I don't it. think Wes Welker. Will I make think it. Gronk's going to make it. Well, obviously, yeah, Gronk. He had he had Gronk, <laughs> and he had Randy Moss. Yeah. Actually, the data you have here has another interesting factor to it. What? Okay. If we look at the Super Bowl wins starting yeah. in 2014, right? Yeah. Tom Brady. Yes. 2014. Yep. Cap percentage 10.6. Yeah. Yeah. Next year, Peyton Manning, 11.7, right? The next year, 2016, Tom Brady again. Right. Right. 8.6. And even a lower percentage. Then Nick Foles at 0. 0.9. That was he, a deal, he, right? The, right. The, the, the two outliers are Russell Wilson and Nick Foles. Nick yeah. Foles was no, the back of the I'm, Carson Wentz. My point is Russell I Wilson. have a different point to make here. Tavares Jackson. So then you have Nick was Foles, the, 0. 0.9. The then Tom Brady again, 2018, right? Yeah. 12.2. Patrick Mahomes, 2019, 2.4. That was a good deal. Now he's being paid unbelievable sums. And then Tom Brady again, 2020, 12.3. And then Matthew Stafford, uh, 2021, 10.7. It would, based on these trends, Tom Brady will win the Super Bowl next year. <laughs> Every other year, he wins the Super Bowl. That, that, so that's why the hell you? did he retire? <laughs> he should have stuck in there one more year. 2022, he'd win the Super Bowl again based on the trends. Yeah. I bet he's coming back. <laughs> and San Francisco 49ers are his team, and they're going to win the Super Bowl next year, maybe. Well, if you, if you, Unless the if Patriots you beat them. If you want to go down that road, then I'm going to count you with this. Brady is going to star and produce in the new documentary called 80 for Brady. It's, it's basically, I believe it's a road trip to uh, Super Bowl 51. So I think, and he has his, his autograph company, he has Brady line clothing, and he has TB12 sports. He can do all that stuff and still play football. But I think he's not, what Tom Brady does, he's an all or nothing kind of a guy. And he, and he said that in his retirement speech. He doesn't want to make that co- the competitive commitment any longer. And I think if, I, I, if, if, if Brady's not putting 100% into football, he's not going to play. Well, he still put 100% in. I just think he's sitting home thinking, oh, well, I'm retired. I'm retired. Yeah, did I make the right decision? I still feel good. I still <laughs> right. look good. My arm is still a rocket. I'm still out there I've been competing. I Look at my stats. They were fantastic. Why did I retire? Uh, gee, I better think about this some more. And you know what? He's going to think about it. There's going to be an opportunity to go to the San Francisco 49ers. He's going to take it. That's my prediction. Well, let's move on to the 49ers. There's a report out that 49ers are not getting the offers that they hoped for for Jimmy G. So, What did they hope for? I mean, I, I believe it was a first round potentially or maybe a second round. but. Well, I'm looking at Jimmy G. He he can win some games. There, there's no doubt about his ability to win football games, but it's his individual statistics that are that make him not worth those high round draft picks. He might not lose you the game, but he damn sure ain't gonna win you the game either. 133 yards against the Packers. Is, I thought he was a free agent. No, he's he has, not. No. Oh, he has one. So yeah, he yeah, has to, he has to get traded. Oh, and he asked for a trade. Well, no, no. There was just rumors out that they were going to go on the Trey yeah. Lance. Joe Montana and uh, Steve Young both think that uh, Trey Lance is too 
raw of a talent. He's not developed yet. And I agree with that. Trey Lance coming into the draft hasn't played football in two years. Another good reason to bring Tom Brady in there, to give him uh, the education under Brady. So because yeah, Trey Lance year, is this raw and the most underdeveloped quarterback in that draft class, that he's not ready to play. I agree. So, so do you think? So, I guess the question is: Do you think that the 49ers should try to keep him if, if they, well, they do don't they like want to the play? Do they want to trade him, or have they said, or is it nobody knows what they want to do? It, well, obviously, they're, they're they're hunting for a potential replacement. Well, for him. You saw an article that said they're unhappy with the trade. The trades that they've they're, they're open with? to trading him. That, 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 they're open that, to trading that's, him. That's but why they, they're taking they haven't, calls. Nobody's made a good offer yet. No, they're, they're not happy with the offers that are coming for Jimmy G. And I'm surprised. Like, they're looking for like first round and second round picks. You're not going to get that with a guy that. So are that they thinking that they would the let stats. Trey Lance play? If they, uh, no, I mean, right now, it, it, they, they, they want to move on with Trey Lance. I think San Francisco 49ers and, I think and they their want fans Tom want to Brady. move on. Well, they didn't want Tom Brady in 2019. Well, that was a, maybe a, that was a mistake. Well, they they felt very happy with keeping Jimmy G. You have to remember, Jimmy G was just coming off a Super Bowl. He was just coming off of losing to KC. That's true. But he also lost that Super Bowl when he missed Emmanuel Sanders by about three yards on an overthrow. That would have sealed the game away, put it away for him. So that's why I think Brady was a little butthurt about that. And I think the 49ers made a serious mistake. I mean, Tom Brady went out and won the Super Bowl next year. I know. And he played phenomenally, too. Yeah. So, oh, well. We'll see what happens, but uh, I, I think that I'm in, I'm surprised really that there aren't better offers for Jimmy Garoppolo right now. Why? What do you see in him that makes I, him I worth the that, first or second uh, round? Well, he's been a winning quarterback. Number one, right? He's mm -hmm. won a lot of games. Yeah, he's a winner. He's been to the Super Bowl once. Once he got to the NFC Championship game now twice. Yep. Uh. I think he, his record looks pretty good. I think that, how old is he now? I believe he's 30. Is he 30 years yeah. old? I think he's still got a lot in the tank, and I think he's gotten, I think he can improve. I think he can improve. I think, you know, he makes, he made some foolish plays along the way. Sometimes he throws an interception here and there that he shouldn't. But, you know, look at the rest of the league. I mean, he's up in, I'd say he's in the, He's in the top third of quarterbacks, don't you think? I think he's in the top third. Who's better than him? Mahomes is better than him. Mahomes, Brady. Allen, well, Brady's Brady. Out. We're, we're not including Brady anymore because he's retired. Well, but let, let's let's go. We have Derek Carr. We have jo Justin Herbert. You Derek have, Carr, you think is better absolutely. than absolutely? Uh, I I honestly uh, believe Derek Carr. Do you, Derek, Derek Carr this year was phenomenal. The Raiders were six and zero oh in uh, in last second place. Yeah. So I mean, no, Derek Carr, especially early on the year, he he looked really, really. He beat the Ravens when the Ravens were looking fiery yeah. early in the year before Lamar. Got okay, hurt. so all right, you think he's better? Who else? So we got Derek Carr. We got Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert is a phenomenal talent. I I said coming. I was watching the combine and I could see how good Justin Herbert was. I yeah. predicted Justin Herbert was better than Tua, and I think I was right with that. Josh Allen, hundred percent a better quarterback. Mahomes, better quarterback. Joe Burrow, better quarterback. Matt Stafford, better quarterback. Aaron Rodgers, better quarterback. Um, who else? I would put Russell Wilson better than Jimmy G. Yeah. I, th I think he's got talent. So he, that's he got how many? Receiver. That's eight quarterbacks? I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking. Um, I'm going to put Lamar because Lamar, uh, at, you add his run game to it. You you add his run game to it. I don't lo I don't love Lamar as the passing as, as a passing Lamar guy. has not won a playoff game. He's won one playoff game. One, one playoff one game. One playoff Against game. the Titans, I think yeah. it was last year. He didn't year. even make the playoffs this year. Yeah, well, I mean, he got hurt. Well, he got hurt. He was hurt. That's true. And then I'm debating. I'd say it's a borderline. Lamar better than Jimmy G. Okay, so then you, yeah, I guess, yeah. He's more top, athletic. Top He's more athletic, but he. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in terms of the all the whole package, Jimmy G's won a lot more. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. So, I, I mean, based on you that, think that yeah, Do you think that San Francisco's better than the Ravens overall as a team? Yes, the Raven, the yes. Raven, maybe, maybe this past year, but not prior to it. The Ravens uh, have had very good defense. 2019, the, the, <coughs> I would put the 49ers better than the, the Ra Ravens in 2019. 2020, it was close because the Ravens' defense was really good in 2020. Okay, so you got nine quarterbacks. Nine quarterbacks ahead of them. There's 32 teams in the 32 league. 32 teams, so 32 quarterbacks. So three nine, uh, four nines, a third. It's it's about that's about a third of the that's about a yeah, third of the league. So I said he's in about yeah, the top no. third. No, yeah, I mean, 
But I guess what when I'm looking at Jimmy G, I'm just looking at, you know, yes, he does win a lot of games, so that's definitely a good thing for you. But does he put up the numbers to justify giving a, a big pick like that? Like a first round pick. A, a first round pick... I don't know about this draft particularly. Maybe on the defense, maybe on the defensive side. Depends on which team's given the first round pick. If it were the right. Giants, then yeah, maybe because it's uh, that's right up there, right? It's a number three or four pick. The Giants have the number <coughs> five, five pick. pick. Yeah. Who has the top? Who in the top four? Who is the first? I pick? believe on the top of my head, it's Jaguars. Yeah. Texans. They, they don't need a quarterback. The uh, Texans need a quarterback. The Jaguars, Texans, Lions, Jets, Giants. Then the Panthers are up there. Okay, well, the Giants need a quarterback, the maybe, the and, the, uh, and the and uh, the Jacksonville doesn't need one. Jacksonville doesn't need one. You might argue that uh, the Lions might think about another quarterback, but they they they'd probably, they're, they're, they're they'd probably rather go draft. They probably rather go draft and let the uh, what's his name play uh, Jared Goff Goff play another year. Well, I don't, I don't think I don't think they're like, going to draft the quarterback this year. <coughs> no. We'll see. They're they're going defense. Who was the other team in there? Number three? Who was the third Number team? three would be Texans. The Texans I, need a quarterback. I like Davis Mills. I like Davis yeah. Mills. He played okay. He was the second best rookie quarterback this year. I, I really like Davis Mills. He he yeah. started off very poorly, but it's the Texans. But over the course of over the course of the season, he he almost beat the mm -hmm. Patriots. Well, the there's a number of teams good. that Jimmy G could go play well for. We're looking at the Steelers, the Commanders, the Colts, the Steelers, maybe. Steelers, I heard, were going to go with um, Carson Wentz. Well, that's what I told you. I told you. I heard that That I heard that from somebody else. I, I, don't, I can't remember who. Yeah. So maybe he goes there. But he could, Jimmy G could go there. To the, he could go to New Orleans. He could. Yeah. But then, you know, it, it depends on how much, because then again. He could go to Tampa Bay. I, I, I don't see that. Well, who's Tampa Bay going to have? Bruce Arians likes Blaine Gabbard. I'm serious. And then, and if Blaine Gabbard doesn't work out, they have that the now the second year guy or the rookie last year, Kyle Trask. So who knows? <laughs> Those guys said I don't think so. Not to take them to the Super Bowl. Oh no, no. And I, I, I don't think I mean, that they're a playoff team for sure. I well in in that I mean, they're a Super Bowl division, competitor with Tom Brady. They're a playoff team without him. In that in, in the NFC if, South, unless they have Blaine division, Gabbard in there. No, I mean, even with Blaine Gabbard, the NFC South is such a crappy division. You could win. It. I mean, look yeah. look at who's there. You have the, Sa the, the Saints with Taysom Hill right Saints now. Saints. The the, the, the Panthers. The Panthers with Sam Darnold as their starting quarterback. Atlanta with Matt Ryan, who's thirty six years old, but looks like he's an aging quarterback already. It seems like a Father Time smacked him right in the face. By the way, while we're talking about cap hit, I believe he's a forty two million dollar cap. Or no, I think he's above that. I think he's a forty-eight million dollar cap. Matt, Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan is wow. a, is an, he's the number one cap at next year. Wow. And then right underneath him is Aaron Rodgers, and then beneath that, I believe, is Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins wants big money too, right? Yeah, he's looking. At, I mean, you know, he can't demand big money. They haven't won. Really? They haven't won that much. They haven't. Well, he's, yeah. You know. Yeah. He said statistically, he's been pretty good. This year he was good. This year was the, really good. The team. The team has not done much. You know? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. The Vikings defense needs some work on it. It it was, it was a little. He's not up. the kind of quarterback that can come in and make it make a team that's marginal like Tampa Bay was and make them into a Super Bowl team. That's what Tom Brady did. Well, Tom Brady's the greatest of all time. I, I, I think it's an unfair yeah. comparison. But he wasn't he's making forty million Kirk bucks Cousins a year. To Tom Brady. He's, he was playing for twenty five million. Well, then then he got void as who he's making even less per year because yeah. at least uh, contractually. But like if, if we're talking about this, I think. I guess the way you do it now is you pay a quarterback less and build the team up around him if you want to win. And obviously, with rookie quarterbacks and young young quarterbacks that are still in their rookie deals, that's not what we're, that's yeah. not what they're looking for. Well, they'll be interested to see what happens with Aaron Rodgers and Jimmy G. I guess do you do you still think Rodgers is going to? Uh, you said Rodgers going to stay. Do you still believe I, that now? I, I'll, I don't know. But now that this has come out, I I don't know what he's going to do. I don't. I don't think he's going to get fifty million a year from the Packers. I do you think he's worth it though. No, I don't think no. he's worth it. No, I, I I completely agree with you. It, it's weird though, because back back in the younger years, how of much the NFL, was he making? He I was it like thirty seven? I think this really? year. Wow, forty six next year, I believe. That's his cap hit. When you when you look at like the early two thousands of the NFL, it was about building up in the draft. The Patriots built up in the draft. The Ravens in the early 2000s built up in the draft. The 
what's it called the the Denver Broncos in the late '90s, built up in the draft. Nowadays, it's you build the team, you you get pieces from free agency, you trade for pieces. You look at the Rams this year, OBJ. You get Von Miller. You get Matt Stafford. And look at them. They won a Super Bowl. Look at look at look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They went from seven and nine to I believe was it thirteen and three, twelve and four, whatever they were, and win the Super Bowl. Who do you bring in? You bring in Leonard Fournette, A. B. Gronk, Tom Brady. It's not about building in the draft anymore. It's about getting pieces around you to win the Super Bowl. And if that if if Rogers, I don't think Rogers is looking to win a Super Bowl. And if he is, he's doing this completely wrong, one hundred percent completely wrong. I, I don't see. For instance, I don't see player uh, like if I'm just going off the top of my head, I don't think Patrick Mahomes is going to win one for a, for at least a long time if he's going to be taking 50 million per year out of his team's salary cap. I don't think the Packers aren't. If the Packers retain Aaron Rodgers, I don't think they're going to win one. <coughs> Josh Allen, I think it'll be hard for the Bills to win one because he's getting paid big sums of money now. All these top tier quarterbacks that are taking huge sums out of their their team's cap. Statistically, ten in the past ten years have not won the Super Bowl. So I I think that I think teams need to evaluate how I I, no, I honestly Aaron Rodgers let him go do it if he wants to make fifty million and not win another Super Bowl I would say go do it <coughs> because well, it's you know, hard to win a Super Bowl without a great quarterback. That that's true, but right. you also need to have pieces around you. That's true. You I had agree. Alan Lazard. It's a balance. There has to be a balance, but the quarterback's got to be. Better than average, that's for sure. Well, of course, yeah. Right? You, you need all pieces to <laughs> sink. You need to have a good quarterback throwing to good to decent receivers. I mean, you look at that list you came up with. They're all great quarterbacks, except maybe uh, Nick Foles. He had uh, a great game. And, the, and, the, and Joe Flacco used to be, I think, a very good quarterback. Postseason-wise, he was ball. a very good quarterback. He could throw the deep ball. I don't know what happened to him. He, I guess he just got old. I don't know. But think about, think, think about <clears throat> Aaron Rodgers' company now. Aaron Rodgers and company with Nick Foles, Joe Flacco, Russell Wilson for Super Bowl wins. You think you think he's better than all of them? I do. Which one? The, the uh, Aaron Rodgers. He's in the company of a one Super Bowl win with quarterbacks like Joe Flacco, Russell Wilson, and Nick Foles. Uh huh. You 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 think he's better than all those quarterbacks? Because I do. He uh, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers better than Russell Wilson? Yes, I I think I think he's a better thrower of the football than Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is an insanely good talent, but I think that Aaron Rodgers has uh, better arm talent. Maybe. Arm Defi- talent. Definitely better than Joe Flacco. Athleticism. Maybe no, Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson is better athletically than, than Aaron Rodgers. He's better than Nick Foles, hands down. He's better than Joe Flacco. So I think if Aaron Rodgers wants to be considered one of the greatest of all time, he needs to separate himself from company like a Joe Flacco, like a Russell Wilson, like a Nick Foles. Yeah. To be considered one of the greatest of all time. You know who has multiple Super Bowls? Peyton Manning. He's considered one of the greatest of all time. He won two. He won two. Yeah, he won two. How about Eli? He won two. I don't want to get into Eli. <laughs> I, I don't, I, I don't want to. It's, <laughs> not right now. Maybe yeah. in another episode, but not right now. Eli is... Eli, just, just quickly. <clears throat> I'll put Eli in the Hall of Very Good, not in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Not in the Hall of Fame. I bet you he gets in just because of his name. I there there's a good chance of that. So I sh- I want to move on to this. Russell Wilson recently is still in uh, under contract four years, hundred forty million with the Seattle Seahawks. But yet he took the Seahawks out of his Twitter bio. What's he trying to say? He's making a statement that he's not happy. Do Do you think it's money wise? His team around him wise. I think what it's probably it more the team around him than it is money. Right. I mean, he has a lousy offensive line for a long time now. That team, what happened to that team? They used to be, they had the Legion of Boom. Right. Right? They were good. I mean, look at that Super Bowl with the Patriots, man. That was a great game. There was two great teams pitted against one another. Yeah. After they lost that, they, they've been on a downward slope. I mean, they made the playoffs and stuff. They couldn't get to the Super Bowl. Now they can't even make the playoffs. You, you and they the have Super Russell against, Wilson, you know? And, and yeah. did, I don't know what happened. I did mean, they cut their payroll or something? What's wrong? <laughs> I don't understand it. I mean, you look at the Legion of Boom at its height. You look at that Seattle Broncos Super Bowl. They dismantled Peyton Manning. What was it the 48 to the 43 to 8 game or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Where they just took over the football game. 
It was like it was like they were playing high schoolers. It, we're talking about Peyton Manning, who was arguably the greatest quarterback of all time before Brady, you know, did his thing and left way yeah. past him. <clears throat> we're, we're talking about a Seattle team who's built on defense, but has a terrible defense. They lost to the Giants last year. The Giants, who have basically no one. Hey, their O-line sucks. Their quarterback is below average. Their defense is not great. It was top 10 two years ago, but last year wasn't any good. We're looking at a Seattle team. I think Russell Wilson, he may not portray it because, you know, he, I think he's a very, very classy guy. I think he's seriously frustrated in the coaching, in the drafting, and then his team just around him currently. His O-line sucks. You look at the game against the Rams. What was it? Uh, last playoff game. Their last playoff series where John Wolford and Jared Goff were the Rams quarterback. John Wolford started the game, came out, and a broken hand Jared Goff came in. John Wolford and Jared Goff won the football game because the Seattle O-line could not stop Aaron Donald's solo rushing. Whatever happened to John Wolford? I never heard from him again. Exactly. He broke his hand, and that was it. He, he, he went to the <laughs> hospital and never, never saw, never him, saw again. him again. Never saw him again. Never saw him again. So we're we're looking at a we're looking at a team where Russell Wilson would snap the ball, the Rams would do a four man rush, and Russell Wilson two seconds later, maybe not even two seconds, will be scrambling outside of the pocket trying to make a play because their own line it was basically like they were ghost rushing. Uh, they got to fix that. Uh, that's not fair to him. Uh, Absolutely, he's, he's a great player. I don't understand why they can't invest and get some good players. If it were me, <coughs> I look. I, I would the first step. Do you I would think look Pete at, Carroll? What do you think about him? That's exa- I was about to get to that. I think the first step, <laughs> if you look at a team, if you look down the line, down the tiers in the organization, from the owner to the GM to all the other coaches to the head, I look. I would take a look at Pete Carroll, who's turning seventy-one years old, and I would say, "Hmm, you are really good. You're a defensive head coach, and your defense sucks. Your drafting was terrible. You're old." I think it's time for you to pack well, it up. I mean, and go. I wouldn't old. I wouldn't call it, hold it against him. Look at Belichick; he's not too young. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Belichick is conceited. Belichick. The reason why I don't co- think old is a is a criteria. You can be old and still Older. be smart. No, I I, I agree with yeah. that. But it, it, the, I mean, maybe he's lost something. Maybe because exactly. he's lost no, something because yeah, he's gotten old. I don't know. No, th- that, that's, just that's just my because point. you're old doesn't mean that you're bad. No, no, but, but I'm old. <laughs> you're, 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 you're hitting on me here a little bit. <laughs> I don't, I, it wasn't about... It, the reason why I say old in this case, it might be a negative thing, is because if you look at someone like a Bill Belichick who's turning 70 years old, only a year younger, Belichick is consistently good. It's consistently great. He's the greatest head coach to ever coach. But if you take a look at him, he's consistent. Pete Carroll, low peak, peak, drop off. Yeah. Staying at that low bar, never getting to even close to the peak again. Gets too wound up on the sidelines too. He's running up and down the sidelines. He gets a, jumps up and down He's <laughs> like a big cheerleader or something. I think he needs to calm down a little bit. Focus so, on the game more. Seattle <laughs> O line. O line is a key to them because then that's the O line will help Russell Wilson yeah. help you out your offense. I think they protect him and he has the time. He'll pick your part. Oh, I, I I agree with you. He's smart. I mean, he's smart. He's very athletic. He's got a good arm. You can get DK upfield, and uh, that's what DK Belichick does. Belichick thinks he's a fantastic quarterback too. Who would he didn't say anything? He he gives him the highest praise. So he deserves it. Yeah, he's a phenomenal talent. His yeah. deep ball is better than anything we've seen. I think he scored the most touchdowns out of the f- first ten years of your career. He's starting to get up history. there in age too. He's thirty three. Yeah. Slightly younger than Matt Ryan. He's the same age as I, I believe, mean. He's going to have to. He's going to if he's going to play into his forties. He's going to have to get a better O line. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then or go where they've got one. One or the other. That that's the problem with athletic quarterbacks and why they don't last long is because they depend on their athleticism. So when they can't be athletic, they're going to rely on a mediocre to decently good arm. When they haven't developed their arm talent as much because they've only relied on their athleticism. That's why I think in the future someone like a Lamar Jackson isn't going to be as good. Like, you take a look at Mike, uh, Michael Vick. Michael Vick early in his career was literally a light show. It was beautiful watching him run down the field, throw it 60 yards to Deshaun Jackson and all this. But towards the end of his career, he was pretty average. Pretty average. That's why I think Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson, he's not. I don't think he's a very good thrower of the football. He has games where he can throw the football very well. He had a game where he had over 400 <laughs> yards. I like um, Lamar Jackson. But he relies on, uh, in my mind, I feel like because the Ravens have built 
based on Lamar Jackson's scheme. They're a run-first team, and especially a QB run-first offense. When they line up, they're in that pistol formation, either a tight end or another running back to his right or left, and then a running back behind him. And then what do they do? They do some sort of read option or a, a, a triple option, a yeah. speed out. I think if you keep doing that for another five years, Lamar is going to get injured again, or it's not going to work anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, the teams have adjusted a little bit towards it. They know it's coming, and they've seen enough film now, the teams that have been able to defend it, that uh, you know, it probably doesn't work as well as it did in the first couple of years, right? The first year, I mean, that they did that with him, he was phenomenal. The second year, he won the MVP, I think, yeah. with it, right? Yeah. So, But now it's, I agree, I think it's uh, teams know how to defense it a little bit better. I think he could be a better passer. I think no, he's I, got the arm think, strength and everything. To. He can he zips it right in there. So uh, he runs a lot. So maybe if he has to change his game a little bit to be a, more of a passer, a drop back passer, I think he's capable of it. He's big, and his arm is strong. Uh, I think he, he could be a. I think he could be a good drop back passer as he gets older. I don't see it. I think he averaged less than Aaron Rodgers did this year. <laughs> oh yeah. I I I, I mean. I think there was 10 straight games where Lamar didn't have over 220 yards passing. Well, that's because he was running the ball. Exactly. But, <laughs> but, but I'm saying if he moves away from that because he's getting clobbered all the time but, and he but, wants but, but to extend thing, his though, career, with that, he's going to have to be more of a drop-back passer, and I think he's no. capable of it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. You're with John Harbaugh, who built on the run-first offense. But so, it wasn't always that way. He won a Super Bowl with uh, Joe Flacco. Right, yeah, yeah, but then they drafted Lamar Jackson, and that's when they, they molded the offense around what I know. he was doing. They did change it. And yeah. no receiver besides Antonio Brown, who is a, he's out of his head right now. <laughs> I, I'm going to actually talk about him a little bit later. But you, only Antonio Brown seems to want to be, go, uh, receiver-wise, wants to go to the Ravens. You have Hollywood Brown, who's a really, really good receiver. You have Mark Andrews, who was cons arguably the best tight end this year. You had Sammy Watkins, who seemed to drop off. No, he but just didn't throw him the ball. Other than that, who else is there? No receiver wants to go because they're no, they're, they're going to know. Mark Andrews is the, is the number one passing target. If it's not going to Mark Andrews, Lamar will probably run the football, or it's going to be handed off. It's not a, it's not a, it's not even close to a pass heavy team. They are a run first. I think specifically QB run first offense. So I think, yeah, he could, he needs to seriously develop it over the ne these next couple of years because guess what? I personally think that the NFL is not start is is not going to go be that run heavy NFL. I think it's a passing <coughs> league. It, er, it, early in the NFL, you had some seriously good running backs. You had Walter Payton in the early times of the NFL, Barry Sanders, Jim Brown, even coming up to the later two thousands, you had someone like a oh my god, I'm forgetting his name. Um, he played for the Broncos. He was a running back, won Super Bowl, whatever. I think it was Davis. Yeah. Was it Terrell Davis? Terrell Davis. Yeah. yeah. Corey Dillon, phenomenal running back. Uh, early uh, Adrian Peterson, early uh, mid 2000s, 2010s. The NFL now, it seems like it's a complete switch. The superpower is not in the running backs anymore. It's not in the quarterback. But if you have someone like a Lamar Jackson, who's a run first quarterback, not a pass first quarterback, in a passing league, Something like what happened, like I think the I think offense is going to get a lot more like the Bucks defense. They're, they're going to be seriously good against running the football. The Bucks the past three years have been top three in running the uh, in run defense, but they've been next to they've been next to thirty second in passing defense. It's a passer league. Lamar Jackson. That's what I, that's seriously why I think that the Ravens haven't extended him yet. It's because he's not the quarterback they want him to be. He's a running first quarterback who is seriously underdeveloped in his passing game. So, what do they want him to be? I mean, if if I if I was a head coach, if I was a GM signing Lamar's possible extension, I would say, okay, he runs the ball very very well, but he doesn't pass it good enough for the NFL to live up to the NFL. That's why he doesn't win a lot of games, like in the playoffs. He doesn't win playoff games because the teams, especially in the playoffs, they will study film against you where they'll take out probably your best asset. That's what Belichick does great. He takes away your greatest asset and executes your strongest weakness. That, yeah. that's, what, that's what he strives to do. So I think teams, especially in the playoffs, 
So they want to make down Lamar the pass. Game. They make Lamar pass. The make, make a team one dimension. <coughs> and if you shut down Lamar running the football, I think the Ravens are screwed. No. I seriously think the Ravens are well, screwed. Well, then he's got to learn to be a better passer. So if I was the, if I was the GM, I would say, I would say this next. I year, think he's capable of being a good passer. You watch his passes, man. He can zip it right in there. But I mean, I'm, he doesn't I'm even, about he's like he throws it like it's a dart. He, he throws had, it like a he dart. He had one seriously good passing game where he had 400 yards. And I, I forgot who it was against, but they sh- they pretty much shut down the yeah, running well, game effectively. Uh, yeah. I'm saying, if I was the GM or if I was the owner signing this this possible extension, I would say to, to myself, and I, I would keep this in my mind, I would want Lamar to show consistently throwing the ball well. That means over 250 yards in most games, while also running it about to 80 yards or so. Really? Well, that's quite a game. Exactly. in the air and 80 on the ground. But but Lamar does it. Lamar. Lamar. Oh, how I'm, many run? How many attempts is he going to have to have to uh, get 80 yards? It's Lamar Jackson. W- one attempt could get him 50 yards. <laughs> no, no. But I used to think Lamar. I'm pretty sure this past I'd say year it's going to be probably 10 attempts, right? Because eight yards a carry. That that's that's much better than the average. So. That right. takes 10, pass, 10 plays away, and, a, and what are the number of plays that they have on offense in a game? 60, maybe? Well, well just think so about it. Think it's about it's going to be hard if, to if get Lamar's 250 so yards. Well, play action. That's what I'm saying. Yes, you might take away 10 snaps of passing in favor of the running the football, but some of those, some of the passing plays you implement are play action plays. Yeah. Because Lamar's so good at running the football. Okay, well, I think he's capable of of uh, 250 yards in the air. I'm not sure what 250 and 80 is. Maybe 50. 250 and 50. You That's think? still really, really good, right? No, yeah, I mean, I would, I would say it's not bad. But no, I, I, I bet I, they I resign think, him. I bet they re- No, I, 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 th- I think you giving <clears throat> up, you, you giving up Lamar is a, is much, much worse. You put him in the top him. third of quarterback. I do. Yeah. Because, because he is a great two- it was a two form quarterback. He run the ball really well, and his passing game is is decent, decent to good, but it needs to be better. Uh, for instance, um, in twenty twenty, which is the he played basically a full year, he played fifteen games. Would you believe he only averaged one hundred and eighty three passing yards a game in fifteen games? Yeah. What was his rushing? Uh, a thousand yards. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a thousand yards rushing? Yeah. Okay. A thousand That's yards long. rushing. That's a fantastic year then. He averaged 67 yards a game, rushing a game. How, how many passing yards did he have for the whole season? For what, 2020, which yeah. is last full season? He had, almost, he had 2,700. 2,700 2, plus 1,000 yards rushing. That's 3,700 yards. Yeah. That's a pretty good season. That Yeah. But take a look at his MVP did he year, win though. the MVP that year? Nope. What, uh, what year? That, was, that was Rodgers when he had 48 touchdowns, I think what, five picks. What was Lamar's stats? In the, Lamar uh, in his MVP year had 3,100 passing yards, 36 touchdowns, nine picks. Uh, and his rushing was 1,200 yards. Wow. There is a – that is seriously good, right? 4,300 yards total? Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. But I think I, – okay, I'll, I'll, 80 might seem too much. I think 80 is too much. 50. 50, okay. 50. He averages more than 50 in his career. But you average at least 50 yards rushing in the season and get me like – he, he hasn't averaged above 240, which is what he got this past year out of 12 games. You get me 255 yards per game passing and 50 yards rushing. I'll consider you a top eight, nine quarter, no, top I'd, seven I'd say that's something you could count on him for for maybe the next three years. We need to but extend after it that, down. after that. You got, he's going to have to, he's going to, if he's going to play into uh, his late 30s. I was he's going to have to turn into a drop pack passer, and 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 you know what? He's very talented athletically. Absolutely. So maybe you turn him into a drop back passer and say only run when absolutely necessary, <laughs> right? Run yeah. maybe five times oh, yeah. a game, not not more than that. Maybe right. even three times a game, and maybe he picks up big yards on those three, or run for the first down when nobody's there. You know? Exactly. Yeah, and slide. You know, so he can save his body because it's a t- the league is tough, man. Oh, absolutely. You know? I 100% agree with you. Brady didn't play till he was 44 by getting hammered on runs all the time. Well, the thing about Brady is that he never relied on his athleticism. He knew from the very beginning, I am probably the least athletic player in the NFL. So what do you do? He increased the strength mentally. 
So that's why he would get up to the line of scrimmage, the quick scan the entire field, know exactly who's going to be open. Yeah, that's something that Brady excelled in. Yeah, and that's why he, that that's why he was able to, to last this long. And plus, the the TV twelve method seems to work for him. The pliability over the strength build. I mean, you, when you get battered, uh, Brady got hammered some years, and he still got up, which is just incredible to look at. <coughs> so I I think because if if you take a look at uh, if you take a look at Michael Vick early in his career. Michael Vick was very similar to Lamar Jackson early in his career. Run the ball really well, and his passing game was pretty good. But especially the running the football was the major part about it. But look at him late in his career. Wasn't the same. Mm. Wasn't the same at all because he still, I think, relied too much on his legs. And when, and when you can't rely so much on your legs and your passing game is underdeveloped, you're not a good quarterback anymore. Yeah. Well, he had other issues. His he had dog the, the fighting dog fighting thing, thing. That thing. was like... I lost a lot of respect. For, I lost all my respect for that guy. But but I, I, I think, you know what? He did the time. He learned his lesson. I think he came out a better person at the end of it. Yeah. But Okay. What's, what else are we talking about here? I want to talk about Antonio Brown. Recently, oh Antonio. <laughs> Is he ever going to play again? Possibly. Who knows? But Antonio Brown recently posted a, a picture of himself showing a, a scan of his, what, what would have been his ankle. When he got hurt. I thought of a scan of his brain. There wasn't one in there. <laughs> hey, they scanned his brain and then what? they couldn't find it. Well, well, after what I'm about to tell you, you might also agree. Uh, I, was I, his I ankle, agree what you. did his ankle show? Was it really injured? Well, it, it, it showed a scan of his ankle. I'm going to try to bring the picture up right now. And I don't think, yeah, I can get it. Um, but he wasn't smart enough to block out the date of when that, when that scan was taken. Oh, was it taken before, well, if, way before? If you remember, uh, the Jets game was uh, week 17. So we're talking like, what is it, January? Beginning of January or no. late late December. Um, Antonio Brown was not smart enough to block out the fact that the date that was taken was October 15th. And he was complaining about how the Bucks were making him play hurt and F Tom Brady, and F the Bucs, and F Bruce Arians, and all this other thing. But yet, he wasn't smart enough to block out the date of when the scan was taken of his ankle, complaining how he is playing hurt. Albeit, if, you, if anyone remembers, October 15th, I believe he was out He was out because of injury, and then three weeks after he was healed from the injury, he was suspended for three games for the fake vaccination card. That guy, is he has got problems. There was no doubt about it. I think most teams would be wise to stay away from him. He just uh, he was okay for a while there. He kept it low profile for a while in the, the Super Bowl year. He got a Super Bowl thanks to he should thank Tom Brady for that. That he won a Super Bowl. You know, otherwise he never would have gotten one. Right. Right. So I don't know. Somebody will you wait, somebody will pick him up. I, I don't think so. I I, I think <laughs> I seriously think Antonio I think he Antonio wants to Brown play for next over. to nothing. Probably somebody will try, take a bet on him. You know, but who though? I don't know. What what team would be stupid enough to do that? Well, a team that doesn't have any receivers. He wants to play for the the the, the Ravens, but the Ravens, their culture is not anything. He th- won't be that happy. AB they would be won't happy get enough passes thrown to him. Cousin, his cousin plays for them too, right? Yeah, uh, Marquise Brown, <clears throat> Hollywood Brown. Yeah. Well, maybe he'd be okay there if he was there with his cousin. His cousin might be able to keep him under control. Then there'd be a big ego fight probably between the two of them. Who's better? Yeah. I don't know. So I don't know about Antonio Brown. I, well, I do hey, know about him. He's gonna, a head case. I'm going to show you the picture real quick. That's the scan you see in the top right of it. Yeah. Uh, October 15th is right there. Yeah. What does he say about that? I mean, people picked up on that. Right. Yeah, the, he says, they tried to hurt me intentionally at Buccaneers, sent me out knowing I was still hurt. Tom said he would throw it if I came to play hurt. I came. He didn't throw it. Um, He didn't throw it. Imagine being hurt, having to play through this and being lied to. Coach said, if I couldn't run uh, on this, get the F out of here. F you all, MF. Still can't stop me at NFL. Dude's a head case. Dude's a head case. Yeah. He's arguing playing hurt from a scan taken October 15th when he was still on IR for being hurt with an ankle injury. I don't think anyone should take Antonio Brown. I think his career is over. I think think his his career career. is over because he, 
made the one mistake that the that that coaches and owners in the NFL when they take a look at it, they're like, how did you screw this up? You got Tom Brady's trust. Tom Brady brought you in first year, let you live with him, and you go against him. You call him out for not throwing you the football when he was making an argument that he was hurt. But now it's all about uh, he wasn't getting me the touches that I that I was deserving. Yeah. And by the way, it, it was a big thing how he needed like what fifty five yards and like ten. 10 more catchers or something like that to get a million dollars. Yeah. How about you didn't get suspended for three weeks on a fake vaccine card? You would have gotten, you would have gotten the incentives way earlier than week 17 going into week 18. He screwed up big time. He did. He screwed up big time. And he cost himself a ton of money. Yeah. You know, it was th- those it was years a- that he was out and the fool and the, he had the sexual harassment issue or the, uh, domestic well, violence issue, or right. I don't know. He he cost himself a ton of money if, just if, because if, he, if was he waited. A, was a bonehead. I think if he waited a day or two <laughs> later when he was on the Ra- the Raiders, he would have made like, I think thirty five million dollars if he waited a day longer before posting that stupid conversation with John Gruden and posted. I believe it was on Instagram. He also posted a Facebook. He, he streamed on Facebook Live when he was with the Steelers with Mike Tomlin giving a post uh, game speech. You don't do that. You don't go into a lock. You don't go into your own team's locker room when your coach is giving a, a, a speech to your team and live streaming on Facebook Live. And for and for damn sure, you don't insult the goat and then expect to play again. Tom Brady and, and everyone respects Tom Brady. No one, especially later on in his career, no one want to be the guy that knocked Tom Brady on the NFL. That's why you some people would hold up before they tackle him, or they wouldn't tackle him as hard, or something like that. Because no one want to be the guy to end Tom Brady's career. Because the NFL coaches, players, owners, they respect Tom Brady that much. You went against Tom Brady. You went against uh, the Bucks. You went against everyone around you. And these guys supported you. Tom Brady brought you in. He, you, uh, he asked you to live with him for your first year with the Buccaneers. The guy is he's a jerk. There's no doubt about it. He's ungrateful. And he's a, he's a bonehead. I, I agree. He's not going to wind up with any other team, nor should he. Yeah. So to recap, Aaron Rodgers, not worth $50 million. That's We both correct. agree on that. I agree. You stick with your Packers? He's staying with the Packers? I think so, yeah. I, this, as long as he doesn't demand $50 million bucks, Otherwise, he's probably retired. I don't know who's going to – nobody's going to pay I him I still think he's going to be traded. Russell Wilson, you think You think he's You think he's going to stay? You think that those rumors – I think he'll still stay there. I hope they build a better team around him. 49ers, keep or remove Jimmy G? Well, if they can't find a trade partner that they're happy with, why wouldn't they keep him one more year? He got him to the NFC Championship game, and they were it was a very close game. So, Agreed. Yeah. And Antonio Brown? Antonio head Brown, case. head case. <laughs> yeah. That'll do it for us here on the Harvey Hour. My name's Nathan Harvey. That's Stephen Harvey. Hope to get you guys next week. See you great, then. Great show, Nate. <laughs> Thank you all for watching this episode of the Harvey Hour. My name is Nathan Harvey, and make sure you hit that subscribe button right here to stay notified on everything we do here at the Harvey Hour. If you want this episode a day early, make sure you go over to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour. I upload this podcast in audio-only form a day earlier. So if you want to jumpstart on everything Harvey Hour, make sure you head over to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour. Or you can look me up on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, any one of those sites. But for now, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Nathan Harvey. I'll catch you guys soon.